I know from from your various raps in the past and from reading about you that uh, you have a great deal of interest in classical music. Yeah, I do. I, that's what I listen to mostly. I don't listen to too much rock and roll. How come? I don't think that it gets me off as good as you know, some contemporary classical pieces. Like what? Well, my favorite composers to listen to are Stravinsky, Weber, and Varese, and uh, Penderecki. I think I find more things of interest for my ear in those composers than I do in uh, any number of pop groups that you could name. Do you think that there's um, a possible audience for, let's say, uh, Webern or Pendretsky? Of course there is. Where is it? Well, that's beside the point. The audience exists. It's, you know, it's perhaps not as large as the audience for Grand Funk Railroad, but it's there nonetheless and, and is in need of servicing. There are some people who might be interested in hearing that music who have never heard it before and who might just like to go out and see what it does to their mind to get a little bit of it on them. In the past, um, political types have talked of the music of Webern, the... Uh, Post Webern, really, Penderecki and his and his friends, as being elitist music, music that's difficult for masses of people to listen to. Then I would assume, from that line of reasoning, that the ideal music of all time must be that of the crudest form of rock and roll. I don't think that that's elitist music by any stretch of the imagination. Do you think it's easy for people to listen to? It depends on the person who's listening to it and what he expects to get out of it. You know. What do people come to music for, do you think? Well, in America, mostly for entertainment. I doubt that uh, they're going to derive as much entertainment value out of uh, watching, say, a Webern string quartet performed as saying some rock and roll band who has a guitar player who eats his guitar on stage. Uh, that, that would probably be more entertaining for them. But I don't think that's down to uh, what the music is really about. Is the music of the Mothers of Invention uh, influenced by your interest in classical music? Yeah, I would say so. How? Rhythmically? Harmonically? Both. Other than taking other, other people's work and using it for theme and variations as you do in the Invocation and Ritual Dance and various other places in, in your work, do you think that there is a link between what we call the classical world and your music? Yes, there is a link. It's rhythmic and it's harmonic. Pierre Boulez says of Stravinsky that Stravinsky was the first person, specifically in the Rite of Spring, to write rhythm that most of Western music until that time, starting with Palestrina, had written harmony. Mm, I don't know whether I could agree with that 100%. Do you think that you play harmony or rhythm or a combination of the two? I think that uh, you're getting into some deep stuff right there, and unless you want to get involved in a big philosophical discussion. Of I do. For a teenage radio station, you kidding me? I'll kid you. Okay. Well, it's my premise that you can have harmony constructed out of rhythms. That's the way I look at it. And uh, without getting into a series of charts, graphs, diagrams, and you know, explaining technically how all that's done that's that's one of the things that uh, my listening to forms of music other than rock and roll has brought to the performance of the mothers and was, um, I would probably tend to agree with Lucas Foss's evaluation of the Rite of Spring although it's one of my favorite pieces he just seemed he feels that it's uh, sort of like bigger and better Rimsky Korsakoff <coughs> in a way it is so it's more than that but I think that uh, the L'Histoire du Soldat has probably got a lot more going for it in terms of real innovation and uh, it's rhythmic vitality, interesting sonorities that uh, just didn't exist in chamber music prior to that time. You said um, you sort of wanted to put off a philosophic discussion. It's clear, that, however, that you're into 
um, what music does and how audiences address music. You're quite obviously uh, unhappy that the lowest common denominator seems so often to rise to the top, at least of the economic pile in American music. You seem to think that Grand Funk Railroad is some, something less than um, ideal. What is ideal? What is what is uh, you know what is the music experience about, and how do, what what kinds of things do you bring to it? What, what do you expect your audience to do? Well, first of all, I do not wish to state that Grand Funk Railroad is less than ideal. Grand Funk Railroad is ideal for people who like that kind of music, and I don't want you to misconstrue what I say. It's just that uh, I happen to be interested in performing a type of music that perhaps is not as interesting to as large a number of people as the number of people that get off on that other kind of music, you know. But I'm not interested in that other kind of music, so I'm, I'm not bothered with it. I sat in an audience once and something didn't work on one of your amplifiers, or one of the amplifiers of the last of the mother's bands, and people wanted you to play and were applauding. And you came forward and lectured them on how they wouldn't know the difference anyhow, but it made some difference to you. Um, it's not done often in pop music. Uh, it should be done more often in pop music. It should be done in classical music, too. Because if it's not done, the audience is going to continue to come to a performance saying, merely entertain me, you know, just go up there and you be a jukebox, only we can see you moving around. And unless you do something to alter that image, it'll just stay the same forever. People will just go down there and expect musicians to be robots spewing off some kind of little noise that they can identify with. And I don't think that's what music's all about. What then is it all about? Are you interested in writing for some, some small segment of the population? Or, is it, or are you interested in raising the standard of audience listening? habits. I'm not interested in doing either of the above. What I'm interested in doing is writing music that I want to hear, okay? If there happen to be some people who have similar taste to me, then they would like to listen to that too. However, the music is made available to anybody who wants to hear it. The concerts are open to the public. The records are on sale to anybody who wants to buy them. The radio stations are free to pick and choose what they want to play, you know, just... It's sort of a low-pressure operation, you know. But for those of us who have, have known Frank Zappa only through his records and the Mother's records, particularly over the years, and have come to love you and, and know you through that music, um, when they find that you're going on into areas which they maybe aren't prepared to go in, they are a little disappointed and they say, why? And, and that's the, questions, oh, the only question that I'm prepared to ask. Well, the question I'm prepared to ask is, why should somebody be disappointed? You know, what's disappointing about having somebody do some exploring for you? If I'm, if I'm going into an area that you're not interested in going into, fine, you stay home. I'll tell you what happened when I get back. Send a postcard at the very least. Sure, I'll, I'll do you a public service. I'll find out what's out there. The only problem is, if you don't go there with me, you're going to have to take my word for it when I give you my report. Now, that's not, that's not too smart, you know. She should at least come along for the ride and find out what's happening out there. Where are you going, Frank? Oh, I'm going just wherever I can, you know. You're going out into jazz and into Vabern and to all those places? I started off in Vabern. <laughs> I'm trying to get back. Working your way home? Yeah, I'm working my way back from Vienna. Are you really interested in, in that kind of music, in atonal serial music? Do you compose in tone rows and things like that, or is it, is it more American than that? No, I started off composing serial music. I was writing serial music when I was 18, and I never had a chance to get any of it performed because I was living in a little town where there weren't too many musicians around who could read or, or play well enough to uh, count the rhythm and read all the elaborate dynamic markings that are usually, usually connected with serial music because some, you, know, you serialize your dynamics as well as your, your pitches and you, you can also serialize your rhythm. So I was doing that kind of stuff a long time ago. And, uh, now you're wreaking your vengeance, eh? No. Uh, what happened was I finally did get a chance to hear some of the serial material performed and uh, maybe it was the performance that I finally got of it or maybe it was just that I decided to do something else but I stopped writing serial music you know I was writing all kinds of positive and negative canons and weird inverted this and retrograde that and 
getting as spaced out mathematically as I could, and I was going, wait a minute. <laughs> Who cares about that stuff, you know? Because I'd always liked rhythm and blues, so here I was stuck between you know, the the slide rule and the the gut bucket somewhere. And I decided that I would opt for a, a third road someplace in between. How would you describe that road, other than that you like the road? It's winding. 